Hey y'all, it's Janine and welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you for supporting this channel. I'm coming to you with another Bible study with me. And the text we're going to be coming from is Matthew 13. It is actually the end of a long day that uh, continued. So after my work day, I went on some errands and then got a call uh, about 7 o'clock. And we continued working, trying to help a kid. And which is what we do. So I was said, I just said, you know what? There's really nothing more that I'd rather do right now than getting a word. And uh, so here I am. So if you want to Bible study with me, Matthew 13, keep listening. I am uh, not a trained theologian or anything like that. I'm a woman, I'm a Christian, and I serve in ministry. And I believe fervently that God is real and that he has, uh, even though God is a spirit, I use that human language, uh, I believe that God is the uh, lover of my soul, my creator, and I am grateful that we can go to God in prayer and that uh, as a Christian, I have a lifelong and uh, including eternal life, long relationship with Jesus as my savior. So without further ado, what I'm gonna do is pray and then get into Matthew 13. Uh, oh, let me know what you think uh, you know, in the comments. I would love to hear from you, build some community around Bible study on this YouTube channel. Hauls are great and cooking videos are great, uh, but uh, you know, this is kind of uh, really what my life is centered around and that is my faith. So let's pray. You wise and eternal God, our Father, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Thank you for being our creator and the lover of our souls. Thank you for salvation by faith in your son, Jesus Christ. During this time of study, please be with me, be with anyone who watches this video to illuminate our hearts and our minds so that we can understand your word, receive it, and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so Matthew 13, I am using the New International Version of the Bible. And this um, section starting at 13 and 1 is called the Parable of the Sower. It's one of my favorite parables. My church is reading, is following a reading plan that will take us through the Bible in a year, every day's reading has a um, a New Testament reading and two Old Testament readings. So this uh, particular day, which would have been Wednesday of this week, excuse me, of last week, it was Matthew 13, 1 through 23, Leviticus 17 and 18, and Proverbs 28. I simply felt led to pick up where I left off uh, and continue rather than skipping ahead to where I, I actually am in the study. So, uh, without further ado, I'm just going to read. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things and parables. So just like it says, um, Jesus um, went out of the house and sat down by the lake. There had already been this whole exchange with Jesus and the Pharisees about the Lord of the Sabbath and what you're supposed to do on the Sabbath and all of that. So this is just picking up that this all happened on the same day. Large crowds of people followed Jesus. And can you imagine that if you were alive when Jesus was alive, that you would have followed him too? Or do you think you would have maybe uh, you know, stood back at a distance. 
I don't know, I like to think that I would have been a crowd that was following along uh, behind him, but I, and I hope that I would have been in the crowd, uh, but I, who knows, I may have been a naysayer, I don't know, I, I hope not. From where I am now, I think that I would have been following him around. But you know, sometimes I think about practical things. I don't know if you're ever, if you're familiar with the story of Mary and Martha, and uh, you know, she got a little put out because her sister wasn't um, helping her in the kitchen. And I'm like, you know what? I might have been busy in the kitchen, you know, doing practical things. So, but I like to think I would have been following. Anyway, that was a big tangent. So this is the parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. I'm a gardener, any of you a gardener? So I can relate to this analogy because, this parable, because um, you gotta have soil for your seeds, right? Uh, now, it's interesting because near where I live, there's a rock retaining wall that separates my subdivision from the subdivision that's up, that's kind of, I guess it was built into a hill. I don't know, anyway, it's the next subdivision over. And there isn't much soil on the rocks because it's rocky, but there's some wildflowers and some shrubs that have managed to grab hold and grow in uh, those rocky places, right? It's really quite uh, amazing. But typically, and, and one of the things you have to be careful of if you're a gardener is that when you sow your seed, that you tamp it down or you cover it with more dirt or something so that the birds don't come uh, and eat it, right? So he's using this parable that I can really relate to because I'm a gardener. So verse six, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. You may have experienced that as well. So there's no substance, there's not enough soil. It sprang up quickly and it withered because it didn't have enough root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. And what I was thinking about was that, you know, we want that good soil and that soil is my heart, it's my mind, it's my spirit. But sometimes if I'm out of sorts or if I'm really preoccupied with like what's going on in the world, like COVID-19 is going on in the world, then um, maybe that, that word won't really penetrate through those worries. So I have to be uh, on guard for my, to, that my heart is open which on guard and open sounds kind of like opposites, you know, but uh, that's what kind of came to me as I was reading this parable. And uh, let's go to verse 10. So the disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables, which is a really, you know, that's a good question. Why do you speak to the people in parables? If you're familiar with parts of the New Testament, maybe you're not, uh, which is fine. Jesus often spoke to the people in parables, which were stories that's based in uh, really common analogies of, of life using metaphors and imagery from real life that had a heavenly meaning. And often people didn't understand. Sometimes I don't understand what he's talking about at all. You know, I mean, it's just kind of common. I'm like, what did he mean when he said that? I really don't know. Got to pray about it and do some extra study, you know, ask the pastor read a commentary or something because uh, sometimes I have no clue and they didn't either uh, pretty often the disciples that had no idea what Jesus was talking about I mean they just really didn't know it's kind of comical but also very human and we're like that too we don't know what he was talking about uh, verse 11 he replied he being Jesus the knowledge of the secret secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you but not to them Whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. 
Whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him. Okay, so that kind of sounds kind of ominous. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, well, if you have, you'll get more. But if you don't have, it'll be taken from you. So it's like, oops, I guess you want to be in a group that, you know, has and gets more. And I believe what he's talking about is the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, um, which is going to be given to the disciples, disciples of Jesus. So in verse 13, he said, this is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. So it's like um, they see with their eyes, but they don't really see what he really means. And though they hear with their ears, they don't really hear. Now he has said above and nine, who has ears, let him hear. He's not really talking about your ear as in your ear, but um, hearing on a much deeper level i do believe that's what he's talking about and then in verse 14 he says and them is fulfilled the prophecy of isaiah old testament prophet you will be ever hearing but never understanding you will be ever seeing but never perceiving for this people heart has become callous they hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes otherwise they might see with their e see with their eyes Hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and I will heal them. And right away I felt convicted because sometimes I don't hear or see because there's a callous in my heart. A callous because of being deeply wounded, of being disappointed, or being angry. And those intense emotions um, are kind of like the filter through which I filter out what I should be hearing or seeing or understanding about the kingdom. And so I was like, okay, now God will soften your heart, but off, well, let me talk about myself. <laughs> when God has softened my heart, there have been um, life events that have just totally devastated me and I felt weak. But in those moments, I also felt like God was cradling me so the moments when God has softened my heart wasn't by using something destructive to put me in my place, but it was when he has held me and comforted me, when people have been very kind to me, just out of the blue. And it could have been just a simple action or just a simple word. And I felt my heart soften, you know, um, and so, you know how it is when you have a callus like on your heels or your hand, you gotta work at it, you know? And how do you soften a callus? Um, now, some people will just scrape to remove a callus, but that's not really softening it. You may put a bomb on it. For example, um, I have some gymnastic style. Now, I am not a gymnast. <laughs> I can't even do a pull-up, y'all. And I've been doing CrossFit for a couple of years. I gotta get some more weight off before I can do a pull-up. But um, the the salve, which oftentimes gymnasts use, I rub that in. And what does that do? That softens the callus. And so what I'm getting at is that um, God will soften our hearts with, with tenderness and love and kindness, not by beating us over the head. And I've heard some people say that people have to be broken down. That's not, that's not godly. That's a worldly type perspective of one person breaking down another. The word says that iron sharpens iron. It doesn't say that um, bash people over the head <laughs> with, with the word or just with your words to try to break them down to somehow make them better. That is a very distorted thinking that comes from the word, I mean, from the world. So I'm reading at chapter, um, still in chapter 13, verse 16. This is a very long chapter and I'm probably not gonna go to the end on this video. Um, Verse 16, but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see, but did not see it and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. To me, that's kind of just 
stating the obvious. There were prophets before them that didn't have this uh, experience. Verse 18, so now Jesus is explaining exactly what he means by the parable. And I'm like, well, thank you. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears a message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. So that's the imagery of sowing the seeds in one heart. So the, the fertile ground is, is your heart or the, the um, well, the ground is, is your heart and there's different conditions of the ground. <clears throat> this is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy, but since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. And you know, what I was thinking, um, because I do facilitate classes, was, um, and sometimes I share my face with other people, is to share it in a way that people understand. Uh, I have a lot of education, you know, in my field, which is psychology. I'm not a psychologist, uh, but uh, I, I try to keep it simple. And when I do share, when I facilitate a class or even preach on occasion, then I, I try to bring it at a level that people can understand. And so, I think about how when I don't understand something, it's very hard for me to to follow it. And that's when I'm most vulnerable if I'm if I don't understand, right? So we're vulnerable when we don't understand. We're vulnerable to the evil one coming and snatch it away because it never really took root. And then this is the seed. He talks also about the seed that fell on rocky places. So but I've also been, you know, sometimes I think about this as um, almost like my discipleship journey. Um, and I'm still on this journey because initially I didn't understand it. I didn't grow up in church. Uh, my family was in church. They were Catholic and then uh, did not practice the faith as soon as they were old enough. This is my mother and my stepfather. And it, it was not... Um, I was not raised in a Christian home is what I'm saying. And when I started, had, I, but I remember being very young and having that yearning to learn to know about God and to understand. And uh, it was once I became older that I realized I was having these spiritual experiences. I just didn't have a language for it. And as I went, and I had to be churched. I mean, I was totally unchurched. I had to be churched. And so I didn't understand what I was hearing. And so it did not take root. You know what I'm saying? And then once I started to understand a little bit, I had, I didn't have roots. It, I didn't have really have a foundation. And so uh, I got easily discouraged or disappointed because I, you know, I didn't really have, I mean, I think when you're new to the faith, you don't really have staying perseverance because you're just new, right? So perseverance means over time, but if you don't have any time in, then how you can persevere in it? I mean, some people just get in and, you know, they can really, um, they, well, actually, I think I'm exaggerating. Most people have some pitfalls. I mean, some struggles, some stumbles when they're new to uh, the faith. I certainly was that way. So, um, let's see. And in 22, <clears throat> the one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. Uh, well, I'm not wealthy, but I can tell you this, that uh, sometimes I can be a real worrier and will feel anxiety and thank God that I've got friends and family who encourage me when I'm not encouraging myself uh, in the word, you know. And sometimes uh, I, I get concerned about money. But the fact is that God continually provides for me, which is a blessing. And so <clears throat> um, I don't... I can say I'm not wealthy, but if I'm not careful, then the worries of life can kind of um, choke out, you know, um, 
the power of the word in my life. Not in that God is less powerful, but how I apply it or how I'm living is in defeat from a perspective of defeat instead of power and authority. So <clears throat> this was convicting as well because it was like, don't worry, because he cares for me. I can cast all my cares on him because he cares for me. Cast all my cares on Jesus because Jesus cares for me. So I'm like, okay, you know, don't worry. And then verse 23, but the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is a man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown, right? So when that seed falls on good soil in our hearts, then our lives will be fruitful. And many times that what um, when I'm in class, I'll pray that the word falls on good soil. We want that good soil so it can take root in us, in us physically. Um, Cause it's, it's amazing that the um, Jesus who is the word takes up residence in us by his spirit. That's, that's just amazing, right? But we want to get the word in us, have it um, take root and in good soil, our hearts, our minds, our spirits be open to the word. I want to be open to the word. And as a result of living a life based on the word, there will be fruit in my life and there will be evidence and it will produce 160 or 30 times what was sown, you know, so a very fruitful, abundant life. And, and I just pray and I am pursuing a life of abundance in Christ. And a matter of fact, that was um, kind of the foundation for this YouTube channel, which I wanted to name Soul Satisfied, but that name was taken. But if you look at the banner, it says Soul Satisfied, which represents for me pursuing this life of abundance in Christ in, in all aspects of my life. So that's faith, that's my finances, that's physically, that's family, you know, keeping with the Fs, uh, that's and, and doing things that I find deeply satisfying that are positive, right? So um, I, I want that crop of abundance in my life. And I think that everybody else does well no I, that's an exaggeration some people don't want an abundant life unfortunately they don't okay so let me see <clears throat> i'm just checking my notes so the parable of the weeds so i'm picking up at verse 24 so this is another parable Jesus told them another parable. So Jesus is still engaging with his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. All right. So we got the good seed in the field. But while everyone was sleeping, the enemy came and sowed seed. Excuse me. His enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. Y'all. Don't we all have enemies? I know I have enemies. And what does the enemy do? Sow weeds. What do weeds do? Choke out the flowers. If you have a garden, then you know that you have to pull up weeds. Uh, I have a, I can't remember if it's a rhododendron or an azalea, but it's in a pot. And I, I kind of have a green thumb. Now I don't do as well with, with ferns in the house. But I've been able to grow these bushes in, in large flower pots. And the other day I was pulling weeds out, you know, it, they're not even planted in the ground, but I still had the weed, the pot, and I got some more weeding to do. And so he's using this very familiar language. They understand, you know, weeds. So in this field, you got wheat and you got weeds. Um, but this was a, an intentional sowing of weeds in the field by the enemy. The enemy is the devil. So verse 27, the owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered. 
because while you were pulling the weeds, ooh, excuse me, no he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them, let both grow together into the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. So, what is Jesus talking about? Well, he's talking about the harvest at the end where the wheat, which will be his believers, will be gathered together, bought into his barn, and the weeds, which are the unbelievers, will be burned. Now, a lot of people get really upset because they think, why would God not accept everybody into his kingdom? Well, let me ask you this. God is a gentleman. Let me say that first. So, why would you want to spend eternity with somebody you don't believe in? You know, the question doesn't even make sense. It's like, you don't believe, but you want to go to heaven. But that's where God is. You know, you got to make a choice. Uh, and then there are some people who absolutely don't believe. That's unfortunate. Uh, there's not a universal salvation of people who don't believe. So, but there is salvation for people who do believe. So, <laughs> when I look at this, I'm thinking about... Um, that harvest as being the end time, that final harvest, uh, there will be a judgment, all people will be judged, and then there will be a separation. Um, and there's also, well, you know, no, not there's also, I mean, that's the point. <laughs> That'll be a separation. Cause so that's when, what I'm thinking about when I read this passage is that there will be a separation, the wheat from the weeds and um, the barn will be um, where God is. And that's exactly where I want to be. Um, so what ha I have shared with you is my reflections on Matthew verses, Matthew chapter 13 verses one through 30. There's so much more in this chapter that I could share. This video is already pretty long. It's getting ready to get up to um, 27, well, probably about 30 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna stop there with Matthew. But what I do definitely wanna share with you is before I sign off and I'm gonna pray, is share some verses from Psalm 91. Now, um, we was talking about the word being the seed that's sown in good soil. And one of the th things that I'm continually reminded about is to believe the, the word and to trust in it and not worry. I did mention that I can be a worrier at times. Well, the um, psalm that I have been focusing on for the month, I'm going to tell you now, I have not memorized it. And um, I keep repeating verses one and two to myself. I have them written in my planner so I can keep coming back to them and work on verse memorization uh, is Psalm 91. You know, with everything that's going on with COVID, people are dying. Um, a woman who, Miss Frazier, she lived right next door to my grandmother. She recently died in New York from COVID-19. And it was actually in the paper because people are asking why did they release her. Um, and all over the world, there is this, um, this fear and anxiety and, and worry. You know, I don't have a mask. I have very few gloves. I have to go outside. You know, I, I went and got groceries today. And like everyone else, it's on my mind to some degree. But I want you to take comfort in Psalm 91. And I'm just going to read um, verses 1 through 7. He who dwells in the secret he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence, which is disease. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, 
nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that, des that destroys at midday. That's Psalm 91 verses one through six. You know what, I'm just gonna read some more of it. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Now, you may recognize verse 12 as um, Satan misquoted that when he was tempting Jesus in the wilderness. Yes. Verse 13, you will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Verse 14, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So that's Psalm 91. Just want to encourage you to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, which is in your relationship with God. I'm encouraging myself to during this time of pestilence and plague or whatever you want to call it. If you want to apply that language to COVID, some people already are. It's a virus and people are dying. Nonetheless, God is our protector. He's our shield. He's our refuge for those who believe. And if you don't believe, I encourage you to make a decision to believe in God, believe in Jesus, and just tell him you want to have a relationship with him. Some people say, you know, you have to pray this special prayer. You really don't. You can just say, Lord, help me. Save me. I want to know you. Come into my life. I surrender. When I was in my early 20s, um, and I was already going to the Catholic Church by then, uh, my true moment of surrender came several years after that when I said, Lord, I can't do it anymore. You take over, I surrender. I don't remember what day it was. I just remember that it happened. And the next day I had uh, a peace and a joy in my life that I had never before experienced. Um, so yeah, our hospitals overwhelmed? Yes. Are people dying? Yes. Are uh, good people getting sick? Yes. Are people worried they are separated? Yes. That is true. That is the reality. When you have, though, a relationship with God, then you are kept for eternity. And by kept, I mean your soul. That is what is important. Am I gonna wash my hands? Yes. Am I gonna avoid having people cough in my face? Yes. I'm not stupid. I have confidence though that God is with me and that he cares for me and come what may, no matter what, then he will deliver me and show me his salvation. So. Just some of my thoughts on Psalm 91 and also on Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through, I can't remember, 38. I think we went to 38. Uh, now I'm turning back. I'm turning into these pages of the Bible because 30. Matthew 13, 1 through 30. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you come back. And please put a comment in the comment section, like, subscribe, share, uh, hit the notification bell so you know when I'm uploading new content. I don't know what my next video will be. Maybe a Bible art journaling video or maybe a plan with me. We'll just see. I'm spending so much time in the house like everybody else. <laughs> I might as well make good use of it. Or maybe I'll just play my makeup and post it. Who knows? Um, it'll be some time before I can do another Tuesday morning haul. That's for sure. So <clears throat> join me, please, in a word of prayer.
prayer of blessed God, our Father, I thank you that you are refuge and strength, that you are a shield, that you are help in a time of trouble, that you protect us, that you shelter us like a beautiful bird with his baby birds, and we can be under the shelter of your wings. I thank you, God, that you love us and that you want all men and women and children to be saved and have a lifelong relationship with you. I thank you for timing your word and I thank you for the power of your word. I thank you for all of the people, all of the helpers, all of the servants who are putting their life on the line to save other people. I thank you for the calling that you place on their lives. I pray God that you would give all wisdom and understanding and knowledge to the scientists and the researchers who are working to defeat this virus. I pray that you would just unlock it, Lord, and loose it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would bring this COVID-19 to an end. God, I pray that you would release the knowledge to create the vaccines and make them available throughout the world. God, I pray that uh, you would stabilize economies where they are failing and provide literally for the needs of people and empower us in the community to share what we have, our resources, and to those who don't have it. God, I pray that we can exercise common sense in uh, following the regulations, well, the guidelines from the Centers for Disease and World Health Organization. Lord, I pray that you would comfort the bereaved. I pray that you would comfort Nene and her brothers uh, because Miss Miss Frazier is gone. I pray that you would, uh, Miss Carol, that's what we used to call her, Miss Carol. God, I pray that you would comfort the family, comfort my sister, God, because this has just been uh, all over the world. People are really hurting because they have lost mothers and fathers. They've lost children, uh, and it is a frightening time. God, I know though you are able, and I pray that wherever the word goes forth, that it falls on fertile ground in my heart, in the heart of my viewers, these viewers who will see this video. I pray that people will be blessed by your word. I trust your word, we trust your word, and God, we give you glory and honor Lord, I ask for forgiveness of sins, my sins in Jesus' name. And if I have spoken amiss at any time during this video, that by your Holy Spirit, you will uh, correct it. And uh, that the person heard it correctly. <laughs> Lord, I love you and I thank you. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Y'all, be blessed. And until next time, bye-bye.